Hello Bland people and welcome to Bland Man Studios. Today we are talking about gaming in Windows on a Linux computer. If you're a Linux enthusiast, you're probably getting frustrated with the options for playing your Windows only games. There's Wine, which can be brittle and difficult to set up. There's Dual Booting, which can be um, inflexible. And there's just giving up and installing Windows and doing your cool Linux stuff in a VM. Today we're talking about KVM and VFIO, which is an awesome solution. Alright, let's get into it. Right, so KVM and VFIO. KVM stands for Kernel Virtual Machine, and it's one of the pieces of software that allows us to create VMs on a Linux host that can play video games. The other really interesting piece is VFIO, which stands for Virtual Function Input Output. And basically what that is, is it's a driver that binds to your graphics card, buttons it up, and gets it ready to pass through into a VM. Usually you have a graphics driver um, on your host operating system that binds to the GPU and sends it commands like what to display to the screen, but VFIO instead just buttons it up, passes it up into the VM, so the VM can use its graphics driver to communicate directly with the GPU. So to show this off and how it works, I'm going to run through starting up my machine and show you what it can do. Cool, so everything's off. First, I'm going to turn it on, and you're going to see my host operating system, which is Fedora, starting up. The back of this computer has video outputs on the graphics card, as well as video outputs on the motherboard. And so the motherboard's um, video outputs are HDMI and DisplayPort. And I'm using the HDMI output to go into this monitor. So you can see Fedora has started up. I'm going to log in. And what happens when I log in is I, it automatically starts up Vert Manager, which has my virtual machines. And so you can see here I have my Arch Linux VM where I do some gaming, I do Blender stuff, I do a lot of development there. I also have CentOS and Ubuntu for development and compatibility purposes. And then the thing I'm showing off next, which is my Windows 10 VM. So let's start that up. So as I mentioned, the graphics card outputs aren't being used for this, which is the host operating system. The graphics card outputs power this monitor and then the other input to this monitor. So you can see the graphics card is outputting the virtual BIOS and so I know my Windows VM is starting up and I'm going to go ahead and switch this one over too. And you can see Windows 10 has started up. And so I will go ahead and start up Device Manager here. And what, what this shows off is that the guest operating system, which is Windows 10, recognizes the display adapter, which is my GeForce GTX 1660 Ti graphics card. And so that's showing up right there, which is really cool. And I can go ahead and start up a benchmark to show that we do have real-time rendering on a, on a dedicated graphics card. sound on? Come on! Oh, okay. So, now that's too loud. Jeez. Okay. So, as you can see, the monitor is outputting your game or benchmarking application in this case, and the sound is going to my speaker. And the way I have that configured is that all operating systems know to put their sound out the HDMI port, which in this case goes into the monitor, and then I have a headphone jack that goes from my monitor into my speakers. So whatever input the monitor is looking at, the output goes up, the audio goes out the speakers too. So to quiet that, I can switch back to the host operating system, which is still outputting through HDMI, and I can now 
use the hope operating system or even tweak the VM settings. And to do that, you have to understand my mouse and keyboard setup. So this mouse and keyboard get passed through into the VM. So they act just like a native mouse and keyboard and they have no bearing on the host operating system, but they do move around inside the guest, which is Windows. And this mouse is not passed through, so it just stays owned by the host. And so I can use this to open up the VM settings. And you can see, for example, here, here are my CPU settings. And this is another good point, which there are many tweaks and configurations you can do to get even more performance out of this, even closer to native performance. And CPU pinning is one of those. There's another thing about huge pages, which has to do with the hard drive, virtual hard disk settings. Um, and then the other thing that I'll show off, which is the PCI device pass through. So these, all of these are the different devices that are part of the graphics card and they're passed through into the VM. And like I mentioned, the gaming mouse is passed through into the VM. I also have an Xbox controller, a webcam, and the keyboard. So all of those things will act like they're native to the VM. Um, yeah. So I can go ahead and switch this back. And like I said, the mouse works inside the VM. And yeah, that's that pretty excited about this setup. It took a lot of tinkering to get working and it will be a developing, moving work in progress. Thanks for watching. I'm gonna post the resources that I use to set this up down in the description. The first one is Alex Williamson's blog. He's the main contributor to the VFIO module and that has a really good tutorial on how to set this up. The next one is Pass Through Post. They have a really good frequently asked questions section and a lot of really good information on uh, buying hardware that's going to be compatible with this. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions that you guys have down in the comments. Thanks for watching.